Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm reacting to another Death Battle videos. This time, I'm gonna show three different videos that get started with our favorite Force One Marvel character who breaks the Force One with the Merc with the Mouth, Deadpool. We got Deadpool versus Deathstroke, and then him versus that Pinkie Pie, and then there's one of him versus the Max. So if you guys like this video, if you do, please give it a like, hit the like button. And if you like this channel, please hit that subscribe button. Please hit the bell button to be notified every time I upload new videos. Stay up to date. Also, leave any comments whenever I upload this video. Now let's get on to the video, shall we? So Death Battle is brought to you by Destiny's Expansion 1, The Dark Below. Available now. <laughs> Deadpool! How is this still the Terminator? He doesn't look anything like it. He doesn't say, I'll be back, get to the job bar. Oh yeah, so we had some bad days as well. Not that long, anyway. Ninja Spider-Man. He's no Spider-Man. Oops. Specific, facing the inevitability of death, Wade gave up. He abandoned his heroic dream, stopped his chemo treatments, and dumped his girlfriend to free her from the burden of a man doomed to die. Doomed until he was offered a cure by Department K, the special weapons development division of a strange alien world called Canada. That's an America moment right there. Fuck and yeah. By cure, I mean he actually was handed over to the Weapon X program. The same guys who gave Wolverine's bones the old chrome dip. They injected Wade with Wolvie's healing factor. Which I don't even know if that's possible. Do they have like a spare jar of essence of Wolverine or something? With the ability to heal from anything, his body became a surgical playground for Dr. Kilbrew and his assistant Ajax. Just like Operation, only constantly hitting the sides. But hey, at least he doesn't have cancer anymore. Well, actually he still does. His cells just regenerate faster than the cancer can kill him. Beneath that red and black spandex, he's basically a giant walking tumor, which can talk a lot. Ah! Kill it with fire! Oh, wait. We can. Meanwhile, among Kilbrew's other prisoners, a gambling ring was formed. Patients would place bets on each other's survival under the knife. And these bets were placed in what they called the Deadpool. Get it? Because it's kind of like where his name comes from. Oh, you'll see. Unfortunately for Kilbrew, Wade had somehow gotten superhuman strength, speed, and stamina. Because I guess they had a jar filled with that shit, too. He used these skills to kill Ajax and make a dramatic escape. Free at last, his fellow inmates inspired him to take on his now famous namesake. Deadpool! Deadpool! Oh, yeah! What the heck? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, they're using the veil game model again. Deadpool. I always said game pool. <laughs> See, Deadpool somehow possesses a unique awareness of whatever medium he's in, whether it be comic books, games, TV shows, or an awesome internet show. Uh, what now? Basically, he's a pro at shattering the fourth wall. Bingo! Oh, hey, Boomstick, tell your ex-wife I said oh. You've got five seconds to get the hell out of here before I blow your head off. Unfortunately, all that would do is just piss him off. Bad idea, as Deadpool is a master martial artist, seasoned assassin, and a raging sex machine. What? Yeah, I noticed you left out a few things in the script, so I made some changes. You know, just the important stuff. That's not well, if by raging sex machine he means getting down with a bloated alien, a shape-shifting teenage prostitute, and death herself, he must have some pretty low standards. That's right, this guy literally tried to stick his dick in death. Maybe that's why he likes my ex-wife. But besides his dick, Deadpool has an arsenal of weaponry he can pull out of absolutely nowhere. This is an animation technique commonly called the Magic Satchel. So its existence as an actual thing is preposterous. Oh yeah? Watch this. I hate you. What the oh, fuck? I hate you too. Me too. 
Some of Deadpool's favorite toys include my trusty, rusty twin katanas, some grenades, my two favorite machine guns, butter, and I can't believe it's not butter, a teleportation belt, an infinity stone that altered continuity. Oh, I can't choose. I love them all. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna kill them. La, 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 la. Combined Damn. Both weapons and abilities have helped him accomplish some amazing feats in spite of his illness. His quick draw is fast enough to beat seven Hydra agents at once. He can just make legions of armed I'm gonna upload solo. this video tomorrow. I feel like I make another one. This so time will be bad. He power to predict his opponent's moves. And in one instance, he even murdered the entire Marvel Universe, including the supposedly unkillable Wolverine. He did this with a sword made of carbon nadium, an alloy capable of nullifying healing factors. In other words, he cheated. He survived skyscrapers collapsing on top of him, having his heart ripped out, his head blown to bits, and even his entire body melted into a puddle. But his regeneration is also responsible for one of his greatest downfalls. This power has trained him to think he's invincible, and so he's become quite careless in battle. And that's just if his extreme ADHD hasn't already put him into a bind. Yet there are few more deadly than the regenerating degenerates. Really, Deadpool finally accomplished his dream of becoming the next great superhero. Aw, oh, that's sweet of you guys. Want to see me naked? Wait, what? No, no, no! Ah, oh, my eyes! Yeah. Claw them out! Bounce them out! And now you're star for life. Let's see my competition. <laughs> In the history of the DC Universe, there has never existed a more lethal tactician and soldier than Slade Joseph Wilson. After illegally joining the U.S. military at the age of 16, he fought in Korea for years, where his skill earned the attention of an experimental serum program and the lovely Captain Adeline Kane. This is sounding suspiciously like the origin story of Captain America. Slade actually gets the girl. Oh, never mind. But does he steal cars? Probably. Slade completely mastered every fighting style under Adeline's tutelage in record time. Apparently, this impressed her so much they were married with a kid on the way in mere months. Now that's my kind of woman! Oh, you're a badass? No roses, no dates, let's fight people, get married, and plow! Feeling pretty fucking great about life, Slade volunteered for an experiment that would help him resist enemy truth serums. Everything went exactly as planned. <laughs> You'd think these guys would have learned by now. Wouldn't you know it, the injection did not have the effects they were looking for. But instead of ruining his life forever, the experiment accidentally transformed Slade into the deadliest assassin in the world. A Terminator, if you will. Which begs the question, what on earth does the U.S. military do? Slade rose as a new man known to the world as Deathstroke. Really? Don't forget the life of God! Deathstroke is nearly superhuman. He can hit harder, run faster, react quicker, and push himself longer than an Olympic athlete. Plus, he can use 90% of his brain, unlike the average 10%. Come on, if we really only used 10% of our brains, we'd be about as dumb as sheep. Guaranteed. What's important here is Deathstroke's mind can process information nine times more efficiently than an ordinary man. He can think quicker, hear better, and see faster. God damn it, that's not a real thing. Oh, we should put him and Captain America into a staring gun then. Oh. He also has a healing factor, which can repair any part of his body, even if his brain is blown to smithereens. Bringing him back from the dead. Unfortunately, life back home was rough for Slade. His abilities were put to the test when his son was kidnapped by a group of rival mercenaries. Despite a successful rescue, his son lost his ability to speak. So his ungrateful wife lashed out in rage, and Slade was never the same. Literally. But he's one step closer to his secret dream of becoming a pirate. Question, wizard. If he has a healing factor, how come he's still missing that eye? Well, no one knows, Boomstick, but perhaps not even a healing factor can repair the deepest of emotional wounds. Oh, that's bullshit. Despite his new lack of depth perception, Deathstroke remained as skilled as ever. Partially thanks to his favorite gear. I'm talking dual machine guns, a sniper rifle, and a super bomb. Which is actually just a glorified flashbang grenade with trace bits of kryptonite. Guess who that's for? The guy who fought Goku in one of the most biased fanboy videos ever. Shut up, Wade. Okay, Ben. This is just getting weird. So back to the weapons. 
Deathstroke prefers his sweet Thundercat style sword and laser shooting energy lance. Also, he's got an awesome suit of armor made up of Kevlar and nth metal. Oh look, yet another fictional alloy stronger and lighter than titanium. Also, he has armor composed of Prometheum. Well, my shirt is made up of Boomstickium. See, I can make up alloys too, writers. Actually, Boomstick Prometheum is a real thing. Oh, come on! Though in real life, it's a chemical used in atomic batteries to power guided missiles and spacecraft. But in comic book land, it's not that at all. It can absorb energy, is incredibly strong, and is self-regenerative. Wait, so it soon has a healing factor too? So, it's like his zipper try and close itself when he wants to take a leak? Because that's horrifying. I mean, I remember when I got my junk stuck in the toaster. With like... his impressive skills and arsenal, Deathstroke has defeated dozens of ninjas at once, survived an exploding nuclear submarine, and took down most of the Justice League by himself. He's also really good at push-ups. Uh, how many push-ups can he do? All of them. Despite multiple members of the Justice League agreeing he's the best tactician on the planet, Deathstroke is known for violent outbursts of rage when in extreme pain. Depending on who he's fighting, this can make him even more dangerous. Deathstroke doesn't just solve problems, he terminates them. I am the thing that keeps you up at night. The evil that haunts every dark corner of your mind. I will never rest, and neither will you. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. It's time for a death battle! What a rip! Seriously, what makes this chump worth ten bucks more than me? Come on! I'm me! What? 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 Am I right? Yeah, I am. I'm pretty sure. It's your lucky day. <laughs> I can show you. Oh boy, a show? Can I get Bob first? I hope we have salt and pepper shakers. Damn. Props to the animations how they do these fights, that's pretty good. But who does the voice acting though? That's what I like to know. Time. 
concentrating as you do talking. Perhaps you'd be less predictable. Oh, you're kidding me. I'm predictable? What the hell? Can't I just... Oh, the moonwalk, really? So much death and destruction. That shit coming, oh my god. Well, that escalated quickly. You, you might want to lay low for a couple days. You are pretty much responsible for a mass murder. That, that is a leg. You reattach his leg. <laughs> That's funny. Fiction has a very fragile set of rules, 
authors should be wary, as one small crack can be enough to smash the boundary and send their stories careening out of control. Are we really doing this? We're really doing this. Well, here's Deadpool, Marvel's Merc with the Mouth. And Pinkie Pie, Equestria's Peppy Party Pony. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Loneliness, depression, cancer. When you think of the Merc with a Mouth, these are unlikely to be the first things you associate with the assassin called Deadpool. Yet, before the red and black suit, these were the ingredients in the life of Wade Wilson. Blah, 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 we've been over this before. How about we just skip to the best parts? Hold up, hold up, hold up! You just can't skip my amazing origin story like that. I have a movie now, so we have all this crispy new footage to use. For educational purposes, of course. Where's his back? Where's my shotgun? Just ignore him. In short, Wilson was a mercenary who developed cancer. I have 34 tumors. They were literally everywhere. Oh, the guys who messed with Wolverine picked him up, injected him with beard healing fluids, and turned him into a rotten testicle. <laughs> hey, that would have been a much better... Where Avocado has everybody. sex with an older, well, nasty Avocado. You know as well as I do that I'm kind of a big deal, and I've always lived... At the end of somebody's asshole, too. <laughs> <laughs> this sloppy mobile way is unconscious. I love that part of the Deadpool video game. I was working in the Savage Land after my dinosaur rodeo. The will of what? Oh yeah, check it out. I took a selfie. Hashtag no filter. Huh. Would you look at that? Speaking of Wolverine, Deadpool gained a healing factor from those experiments, which easily trumps anything the X-Men can do. He's strong enough to redirect a rogue helicopter, fights faster than a normal man can react, and is an expert marksman with virtually any weapon he touches. To all my adoring fans out there, you know what I'm all about. Swords. I got them. They're made of this nanoceramic fiber sharp enough to cut through Spidey's webs and right through his franchise. <laughs> Grenades, shuriken, bullets inside, all that good Naruto stuff. I got them on deck, baby. Personal fave, though. I spread them like Santa spreads Christmas joy. Are those Hegler and Cars Mark 23 pistols? Yeah, but they can be whatever you want them to be, baby. Mm. Oh, right, you got the magic bag with the elephant. Wait, okay, what are you talking about? What elephant? After gaining his enhanced abilities, Deadpool's life only got stranger. He's gone on time-traveling adventures with the mutant cable, joined the Agent X mercenary force, temporarily gained the power cosmic, and even got involved in a love triangle involving death. Oh, that whole debacle? Up oh, again. Okay. So get this. You know the Grim Reaper? Spectre of death and all that? Well, turns out she's this sexy hot skeleton babe, and she totally digs the Deadpool. But our Facebook status is still on. It's complicated. Because I'd have to die to be with her. And then Thanos shows up to try and take her for himself. He cursed me with immortality so I could ever see my boo again. But he later took the curse back because he really wanted to kill me. But he can't because then I win. And he knows it. And I thought I had issues. It would suck to be a galactic lord. Pretty good for a Vancouver Canadian, right? Deadpool may be effective as a wise cracking bird, but when he gets serious, he becomes nigh unstoppable as far as super enhanced cancer ridden assassin go. He's gone toe to toe against Captain America, infiltrated Doctor Doom's country of Latveria, and defeated a horde of 100 ninjas while talking on the phone. Even if you could dub that fighting skill, Deadpool's healing factor puts him on a whole nother level. It's let him dive headfirst out of a moving plane, survive the freaking Chrysler building falling on top of him. Strode right out of nuclear explosions and even regenerated from being turned into a puddle. So that same healing factor is also part of Deadpool's biggest weakness. Hey, you dissing me, Bob? No, Boomstick actually has a pretty good point. Years of immortality has let you get away with being sloppy in your approach, which allows a clever enough opponent to gain an upper hand. Like this. What? What? Oh, hey, 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 what's that? What are you doing? No! You monsters! I won't go the way of Amazing Spider-Man! Oh, quit whining. You'll be back. No! Since when could you do that? It's been two years since our last Deadpool episode. I've had plenty of prep time. The land of Equestria. 
a magical kingdom full of rolling plains, beautiful mountain ranges, and rainbows. A place where you just can't help but be happy, unless you happen to live on a rock farm. The hell's a rock farm? Like a quarry? No, no, no. They literally farm rocks. For these ponies, rocks were their life. They harvested rocks, they sculpted rocks, they played with rocks, they built their homes from rocks, they even ate rocks. Well, one pony on this farm wasn't quite as rough crazy as the rest of her family. Oh no, she's a whole nother level of crazy. This is Pinkamina Diane Pie. Just call her Pinky Pie. One day, chipping away in the grueling rock fields as always, Pinky witnessed something that would change her life forever. Colors! The very sight of this unprecedented explosion of color, which originated from Rainbow Dash's first legendary Sonic Rainboom, instantly brought Pinky the most joy she had ever felt in her life. Brimming with happiness, she wanted to share her newfound jubilation with her grim-faced family. So she stayed up all night organizing a surprise party. It was so off the chain that it made them all smile for the first time, which was actually quite horrifying. That's when Pinky finally realized that her life's mission was meant to bring joy to all. Wait, what's that thing on her butt? Oh, that's a cutie mark. Everybody gets one when they discover their calling in life. Oh, I got one of those. After I found out alcohol and guns were my calling, I woke up and found a beer bottle crossed with two shotguns on my left butt cheek. Boomstick, that's a tattoo. You don't remember it because you passed out drunk in the parlor chair. But booze and weapons do define my life, don't they? Well, sure, but... And it's fate. Anyway, now that she had something better to do than farm rocks for a living, Pinky left home and ended up in Ponyville. She landed a job in bed at the Sugar Cube Corner Bakery and set off to befriend every single pony in town, usually with a welcoming song and dance. I guess now's as good a time as any to mention that Pinkie Pie also sees past the fourth wall. Sorry, can I interrupt you guys? No, nah, we were just trying to do a show, but yeah, by all means, tell them about yourself. Well, I go grab a beer. Well, I can sing, I can dance, I throw the best party, I can- No, no, no! The awesome stuff! Give them something legal! Secret party planning Batcave. 
She also frequently alters her own personal gravity without having to affect the world around her. By inexplicably changing physics like this, Pinkie Pie is theoretically capable of, well, just about anything. Okay, for a very big pony, this Billy is actually kind of scary. Only way it could get any worse is if there were a whole army of Pinkie Pies. <laughs> Funny you should say that. <laughs> no. No, no, no. I can always use the miracle. My Nana Pinkie taught me how to use it to duplicate myself over and over and over and over and over. Pony, no more. No more. Just go back to Ponyville. You'll, you'll be getting a new visitor soon. Very soon. Like right now soon. <gasps>
That was the last time I ever made a lot of oh, no! You! I finally found you! The idiot with the stupid face, the idiot with the stupid hair, and the idiot who writes my jokes because he thinks he's funnier than me! Well, I mean, I did write that one, so... I, mean, I just got one question for you all. Just one! Why, oh why, would you pull me into another one of these battles on my birthday? Come on! Wait a minute! You didn't tell me it was your birthday! <laughs> what the f- <laughs> Well, too much for the death in death battle now, right? This one I just find like holy over shit. Over again until you just can't take it anymore. Oh, Ooh, shit. shit. Are you talking about me? You're such a sweet talker. Go away. We've been through this, but why stop a good thing? Hi, I'm Wade Wilson, masterful mercenary and twice robbed of winning People Magazine Sexiest Man Alive Award. Way back I got stuck in a seriously shitty situation called cancer. The worst supervillain. But then the good folks of Department K offered me a cure. Sounded great. Until I learned the big plot twist. Department K was actually a sect of the Weapon X program, a top secret project for crafting super soldiers by any means necessary. They shot Wade up with 50 cc's of hot, creamy Wolverine juice. It gave him the same crazy healing factor, but also turned his face into an improv comedy prompt. You look like an avocado. Had sex with an older, more disgusting avocado. Yeah. <laughs> After escaping in gruesome fashion, Wade resumed his life as a mercenary, taking the name Deadpool. He's got your Deadpool. standard superhuman buffs, oh. super strength, super speed, Deadpool. super toughness, the works. But he put that I have both Deadpool movies I do of them. Can we see how the third one turns out? He lets himself get hit a lot. Hey, when you have a healing factor that would make even Logan's nuclear-charred adamantium skeleton blush, you let yourself nosh on a lead sandwich every once in a while. I've survived gunshot wounds, impalement, organ destruction, superfication, and even freaking disintegration. Good luck trying to take me out. Don't take all the credit for yourself. You know you were cursed with everlasting life by Thanos during some of that. Yeah, well, me and Space Germans have a really deep relationship. About as deep as I am and his girlfriend. Hey oh! Good thing Thanos removed the curse so we could violently murder you. An impulse I deeply empathize with. 
Well, as much as I like getting resurrected after that, I like doing the opposite to other people even more. As in killing them. With weapons, especially my lovely Golden Girls, B and Arthur. That would be his katanas, which are almost unbreakable thanks to an energy field from his suit. Fully charged, they can even cut the Hulk. Even then, Deadpool is a walking arsenal with enough machine guns, sniper rifles, grenades, rocket still. launchers, tranquilizers, etc. to take I out this whole just normal and katanas. I'm feeling cute, I might delete you later with any one of the wacky weapons of mass destruction I picked up on my misadventures. Like a gun that wipes you from history, the actual Venom symbiote, and the 7th Infinity Stone, the Continuity Jam! It rewrites canon itself and could even make wizard groups with bearable co-hosts. I mean, maybe. Oh, yeah? Well, let's go over some of these feats of yours. Take it away, Wiz. With pleasure. Deadpool has showcased his impressive super strength when, at one point, he stood up straight without aid. Based on Deadpool's canon weight and examining the distribution of mass here, we can deduce his legs can support 210 pounds, or just under 100 kilograms. The what? Oh, or how about the time he held up this pistol? That's a Desert Eagle Mark 19, which weighs 72 whole ounces. Amazing! Guys, what the hell? You know I can kick people through concrete walls and yank around a six-ton helicopter, right? Here we can see him running, much like typical human beings run. And the average male running speed is about 9.4 kilometers per hour. Hey, hey, I was out running a goddamn airplane. Do you know how fast airplanes are? Jesus H. Christ Almighty, do some research for once, you frauds. God Jokes damn. aside, Deadpool can move faster than the eye can track. He's caught Captain America's shield, which Cap can throw fast enough to slice through tanks. He's even dodged the electric-powered mutant surge's lightning blasts. If these are anything like the leaders of real lightning, they could be moving over 98,000 meters per second. Deadpool's a tough son of a bitch too. He survived a sunburn from a freaking space laser, getting crushed under the Chrysler building, and an explosion that cratered an entire city block. Just look at the size of that! Measuring the crater's volume and applying statistics for pulverization of rock, the explosion must have equaled about 130 tons of TNT. That's like getting hit in the face with 22 monster trucks driving at top speed, all at the same time. But Deadpool isn't perfect. Far from it, obviously. Unlike Wolverine, his chemically induced healing factor isn't a natural evolution, and so it seriously damaged his brain. Which explains a lot. This guy isn't just annoying as balls, he's legit insane! Talk about a terrible combination! Well, Deadpool's insanity leads him to talk to seemingly invisible people. Namely, the writers and editors of each comic book he's in. I mean, is it really insanity if it's true? That's even how he got rid of the continuity gem, by literally handing it over to the editors. While his broken mind and daredevil attitude makes him incredibly unpredictable, it can often put him in over his head. Plus, while his healing factor is quite potent, it's not an instant quick fix. That's why he prefers to reattach his limbs rather than wait for them to regrow. Am I crazy? <laughs> the baby hands say. Really small. That's not pleasant. His biggest weakness, though, is that he's a dumb internet meme and he should feel bad about it. And using this I was dead for an internet meme. meme. I don't get that. Exactly if I ever upload this, is. please let me you know, know in the comments this how is that for an that meme. Please and thank you. Can I just say, I hope you douchebags never change. I love it. I'll be over there chomping on popcorn and chimichangas while your heads explode trying to figure out how I could possibly lose this one. Toodles. Good riddance. Deadpool may be an annoying clown who has menaced Marvel's good and bad sides for decades, but he's also had sex with my mom over a hundred times and made her moan like, hey, hey, who takes the prompter? Go back out here, son of a bitch! Damn. Psychologist Carl Jung once described the persona as a kind of mask, designed on the one hand to make a definite impression on others, and on the other to conceal the true nature of the individual. Uh... Right! Basically, who we are on the inside is different than who we are on the outside. But what if putting on a mask could actually reveal what was underneath it? Underneath the mask? You mean your face? I don't even know how to start to answer that. Use your mouth, it's on your face. Well, while uh, Wiz is trying to figure out how masks work, dumbass, let's talk about one mask in particular. The mask. Its origins are shrouded in mystery. 
Some say it was used as part of an African tribal ritual. Others say it was created by Loki, the Norse god of mischief. Who knows and who cares? It wound up in the hands of Stanley Ipkiss, the slubbiest, dorkiest loser this side of Deadpool. Regenerate degenerates have feelings too, you know. Curious, Stanley donned the mask and was transformed from an everyman to a superman. And now he's a big like that mask character movie. That the media dubbed the Big Son of the Mask was but okay, I guess. Him the mask. With his newfound power, Stanley would take on the mob, get the girl, and live happily ever after. Right? Don't let the family movie fool you. Sorry, movies. I always forget that second one. Don't blame you. This ain't your silly Steamboat Willie shenanigans. Get ready for some good old-fashioned hardcore violence. See, the mask itself is alive and it desires nothing more than absolute carnage. By tapping into its wearer's repressed id, it can turn a nebbish nobody like Stanley into a rampaging serial killer. Complete with Bugs Bunny powers! Horrifying! Metafictional combat scientists like myself have long speculated about a unifying theory that could explain the source of the mask's power. We call this phenomenon Toon Force. Think of characters such as Bugs Bunny, Popeye, and Michael Jordan. A being that wields Toon Force seems capable of accomplishing almost anything they desire, so long as they find it humorous. With this power, the mask can manipulate the laws of physics whenever he likes, even breaking the fourth wall. Oh, God, no, he can break it too? You never said anything about that, and now we've got two of them! Don't forget about me! Ha! <laughs> <laughs> two of them! Uh, regardless, Toon Force allows the mask to summon any kind of weapon imaginable from thin air. Everything from oversized guns and rocket launchers to whoopee cushions, dynamite, anvils, hell, anything from the good fellows at Acme. Toon Force users can manipulate their bodies in any way they like, whether it be stretching their limbs, inflating themselves like a balloon, or shape-shifting into giant monsters. And best of all, you can't really hurt a tune. Well, at least not in the normal way. Right, it's not that the mask has a specific healing factor or some such. It's more like he can just say no to damage. He's had holes blown in him, had his head cut off, stripped his own flesh from his bones, and was blown up into a bloody pulp. He can outpace Lobo, remember him? Because he doesn't need to wait for his body to heal. It just happens. However, the scariest thing about the mask's use of Toon Force is how it affects the world around him. In most cases, the rules of Toon Force are applied to the user and whomever or whatever the force is affecting. This even happens in the movie. Man, look at her go! But in the true canon of the mask, this is not the case. And this leads to some, well, horrific imagery. The mask can pick up cars and knock over buildings with ease. He can dodge point-blank bullets and run fast enough to set the ground on fire. He has survived massive explosions, giant robots, and being kicked in the testicles so hard he flew. Out of all mm. the gore in those comics, that is the worst thing I've seen yet. But remember what we said before about him fighting Lobo, the guy who ate a city? At one point, Lobo and the mask raced around the entire planet several times in the span of just a few seconds and then crashed into each other in an absolutely gargantuan blast. Based on their after-trail rings, and given an estimated time frame of less than half a minute, which fits given the context, they must have been going over 9 million meters per second. Ah, uh, what a couple of scams. There's only one way to really stop the mask, and that's by removing the mask itself. Good luck trying! The only way is if the wearer has already decided to let it come off, and with the power it gives, Who'd want to? Technically, the conscience of the person the mask possesses still exists and could be reasoned with or tricked into removing the mask. Like when Lobo threw a guilt bomb at him after he murdered hundreds of people. But the mask itself has an astronomically powerful influence on its host. Right. I mean, who doesn't like letting loose every once in a while? We've covered a lot of vicious murderers on the show, but I've never seen one who has as much fun with it as the mask. Let's rock this joint! All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. But first, I've got a hunger for some... I swear, if you cut the commercial, I'll strangle you both with an actual blue egg. By now, you've probably heard of blue... Oh. Blue Apron, the leading meal kit delivery service in the U.S. 
Choose your meals each week, get the ingredients delivered to your doorstep, and whip up a meal using the easy-to-follow directions provided. Blue Apron offers plenty of different menu options with an ever-changing mix of meat, fish, plant-forward, and vegetarian recipes. Even if you don't know the difference between a kettle and a saucepan. It's a great way to whip up whatever you want for your meals, even stuff you never thought you could make at all. My favorite part is feeling like a master chef, making creative and delicious meals with my own hands. You guys really need to try it out. It's pretty nice coming home knowing I'll have a delicious meal I can whip up with ease. Are you ready to start making some magic in the kitchen? You gotta try this out. Blue Apron believes cooking matters. Don't have it delivered, pre-cooked, or picked up. Cook it. One a week, once a month, or at least once more than you do now. Check out this week's menu and get $60 off when you visit blueapron.com slash battle. That's blueapron.com slash battle. Blue Apron. Just cook. But right now, it's time for a death battle! Yeah, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got in this mess. But there's only enough funding for a few minutes of animation, so we're skipping that part. <laughs> Mistake, you've got one chance to take that off. Really? Hey, nice metaphor! Huh? Ah. Woo! What a ride! I must break you. Black and four. Got it. it. Actually, that's not canon. Let's just say I know the right people. With this continuity jam, I can rewrite anything I think needs fixing. I could stop Hitler from being born, <laughs> rewrite the Star Wars prequels, or even make you take off that mask. No! Stop it! No! This is over. Oh no. Oh wow! You weren't kidding! Ah, oh, beans were in the storyboards! Old chump, I think that zany stunt of yours ran out the budget. Can't make the scene if you don't have the green. Lucky for you, I have an idea! What the... <laughs> Give me your money! That is sick. That is fucking sick. Screw Fortnite. What the fuck? Ah, that's it. Honey bun, we're good to go! What the hell? It's a showdown. Oh, damn. What? Where'd you get that? Oh, Jack! I'm already wearing it! What? <laughs> Look at the sky. He isn't me. Although the internet thinks he might be Perhaps I've gone too far Far from my reality I'll do this right I'm not a joke What even is a chimichanga? That's a fuck
They call me Magnet, Magnet, Magnet! Fuck you. Oh, he's on the F board. That lady. see it on my own. You made me remember my true self, missing feet and all. And with some help from this royalty-free Sarah McLaughlin ripoff song, I hope you can find in your hearts your true selves too. Sayonara, death battle. Sayonara. I can't believe I'm saying this, Wiz, but I wish he was still around. Yeah, me too. Oh no! Oh yeah! Oh shit. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching this interesting. Hope you guys liked the video. Bye.